Con, get up. Let's keep it moving with a game of right or wrong starting in Buffalo. Hey, Mike T. If I said Josh Allen and the Bills are going to be better this year without Stefan Diggs, is that right or wrong? I say it's somewhere in the middle. They're going to be different, Greeny. Let's go back a year ago. Joe Brady becomes the coordinator over the last seven games. They go six and one. Lead the league in rushing attempts per game. Look for James Cook to be a star in this offense with Dalton Kincaid picking up a lot of the slack for Stefan Diggs. So I think they're going to be different, not better or worse. Well, let the record show I gave you a binary choice. And you went yeah, a different I was about direction. to say right or wrong, I'm not Mike. Comfortable with that. It's not in the middle. Uh, uh, Kmart, let's try and stick to the rules of the game. Right. If I said Malik Neighbors can save Daniel Jones' career, is that right or wrong? I'm going to say wrong. I remember talking to defensive coordinators year after year about, you know, when they were prepping for the Giants, and they always say, we got to stop Saquon. Nobody would ever say, we have to stop Daniel Jones. Malik Neighbors, you know he's going to be the guy. He now becomes the guy that you stop as a defense. So Daniel Jones needs more than just one guy to save his job. Uh, and then, Lewis, let's go to Pittsburgh. Oh. If, I, if, I said, <laughs> if I said fumbles are going to cost Justin Fields <sighs> the Steelers' starting job, is that right or wrong? That's wrong. Look, I, I remember, I believe it was two years ago, Justin Fields playing against the San Francisco 49ers in a monsoon yes. in Chicago. I don't remember, I don't recall in that game him having any quarterback center exchange issues in a monsoon. This is something that's correctable and teachable. Why do we always look, look, with this guy in particular, and we do this to certain quarterbacks, there's always something that we're trying to hang on these certain players and say, well, this is why this guy sucks. This is why this guy shouldn't start. See, look, he can't get the center quarterback exchange, uh, like, ironed out. That's why Russell Wilson should be the starter. Mike Tomlin knows better than that. If he's not the starter this year, it, it isn't going to be, be yeah. because of what happened week one as far as the quarterback center exchange. I promise you that. There will be more detailed reasons as to why he does. So, can we just – look, I'm not saying, look, however we came up with the question, I'm not saying that I'm, – I'm not saying this is us. I'm saying in general that this guy takes more crap – Mm -hmm. from people as far as them constantly trying to blow holes in his game to where now they're sitting there going, and I've seen, I've seen some of the discourse on this. This is why he shouldn't start. Mm -hmm. This is why Russ should start. But to, I mean, it's just, it just, to me, it's, it's annoying that we pinpoint certain people to hang this kind of stuff on. 1,000%, which to me, this is, won't cost Justin the job, but this is what, we all know ball security is very important in the NFL at this sure. position. I think Justin is in, he's in the tsunami of just criticism. Right. Any little thing, now we look at him and say, uh, well, what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is not this. fair. I agree with you. It's not fair. But if you are trying to, if you have limited time because you don't have whole position, every miscue oh. hurts you. Oh, yeah, that look. doesn't mean it cost, it's going to cost him the starting job. It's ju it just doesn't help. I'm just going to say, so I, I agree with you. Because, look, I've been in these situations where when you're not in pole position and you make an error, yeah. that the guy who is in pole position yeah. can make the same error, yes. but your error is magnified yeah. times a 1,000. You're going, well, damn, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I just did the same thing this guy did, and you're making it seem like I might get cut. I've right. been personally in those situations. So I get it. But in the grand scheme of things, it's ridiculous right. to blow this out of proportion. 1,000%. The, the snapping part of it, perhaps. Yeah. Mike T, let me come to you on the – and I, first of all, anyone who has ever listened to me knows I'm an unabashed Justin yes. Fields fan and supporter. I would love nothing more than for him to have the successful career that I've been forecasting for him for years. That said, the knock on him has been the negative plays. So yeah. when you have two fumbles and you have two sacks in your preseason opener, those are the prop. Th those are th that. That's exactly what people always point to. The other, and Bart Scott talked about this at length yesterday, is that he holds on to the ball too long. Mm -hmm. That he is back there, and one of the reasons that he takes all those sacks is because it takes too long for the ball to come out. Mike T, are those th are those reasonable criticisms? Are they fair criticisms of a player who is now in his fourth year in the NFL? Yes, and they're fixable. And he has a new offensive coordinator in Arthur Smith. And again, I think Justin Fields' skill set is tailor made for this offense. So I agree with Lewis. The fumbles are what they are. Those are completely fixable. And as I talk uh, about uh, Bart Scott's issues, I would say, look, you can learn to go through your progressions faster. And that comes back to coaching. Like, read one to two and then take off, you know, and run with the ball. So, Greeny, I think absolutely year four, we should see progress. But again, I give the benefit of the doubt on the snaps, and I think what Arthur Smith can do with him in terms of moving the pocket, 
I really think at the end of the day, he's going to win this job. I think Mike Tomlin mm -hmm. believes in him. And there's another X factor here. He's 10 years younger mm -hmm. than Russell Wilson. So if we're talking about extending one of these two quarterbacks, because you don't want either quarterback to be a free agent at the end of the year, if it's close, I know pole position's one thing, but the benefit of the doubt to me should go to Justin Fields and his future. See, every single sack, right, every single interception has its own individual story. We right. know this, right? We know this, but when we have this preconceived notion in our head of a guy either being a slow processor, he can't read coverages properly, we'll just blame it on him regardless. Mm -hmm. We'll watch a TV copy and go, get the ball out of your hands quicker, where if we watched all 22, maybe no one's getting open. Maybe the reason he got sacked in maybe 2.5, 2.6 seconds is maybe the left guard got blown up. Maybe the left tackle missed the assignment, and he didn't have a chance to get the ball out of his hands. But you know what we're going to say about Justin Fields when we read the GSIS stat line? <laughs> we're going to say, see, takes too many sacks, fumbled the football, turnover machine, can't start him, put Russell Wilson in there. We need to stop doing that kind of crap to these guys and look at it individually. Look, if he didn't get the ball out of his hands because he missed a read, that's one thing. And if that's the case and that, that, that's still happening, then Mike Tomlin and Arthur Smith need to kind of like ferret that out and go, hey, look, you're going to have to sit because you're not doing it yeah. and you have opportunities. But we can't just automatically look at him and go, he took two sacks in the game. See, that's what he did in Chicago. Did you watch the game? Did you see how they came about? Did you see the pressure he was under? There's always more to the story, and I think – but with certain, some guys get the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Justin gets no none. One's no one's talking about the amount of offenses he's been in he, since Justin different gets coaches, none. coordinators that he's he had. He gets none. Yeah. And, I, you know, obviously there's going to be some issues as far as people feeling as though he was holding on to the ball too long there, but we don't really know what those issues were. Look, I think he is trending the right way. I think this – making all a, a bunch of – you know, making a big issue out of this fumble snap thing I think is ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. Okay, fair enough. I yeah. want to get back to him a little later because yeah. it, was, it was the full Justin Fields experience. Experience. Right. There were these snaps where you say to yourself, look how good exactly. he is if we could just harness this. All right, yep. we'll come back to him. Let me go to the next one, though. The guy who replaced him in Chicago is Caleb Williams. Mm -hmm. If I said he looked so good in his preseason debut, I'm ready to say they're going to win the NFC North this year. Is that ridiculous? It is, but I understand why you could, you know, maybe make that kind of projection because – his skill set is so tantalizing. I mean, you saw it in, in brief spurts here against Buffalo. The poise, the athleticism, the calmness to do things that are extraordinary, that he makes look ordinary. But this division is stacked, and you saw also how Jordan Love looked in week one of the preseason. Mm. They are ready to roll. They're going to hit the ground running. That's why I say they're not going to win the division, but Caleb's going to have a hell of a year. Yeah, I think it's the best division in football. No the doubt. injury to J.J. McCarthy obviously hurts in Minnesota, yeah. but that's – that's a really, really top-heavy, if nothing else, division. And then the number two pick yeah. is Jaden Daniels, who you loved going into the draft. If I said he looked awful good week one, he's going to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. Is that ridiculous? Not at all. Look, I think you saw, again, in a very small sample size, exactly why they're so high on this young man and what they have up their sleeve when they unveil the, in total, the total package as far as this offense is concerned. That throw right there, I believe it was Austin Eckler who said that was supposed to be a wide receiver screen and Jaden Daniels read the coverage and audible to that nine ball to Diami Brown. That's the kind of thing he's been doing from day one. All of the veterans and the young players have said he's just taken over. We just sit and we just mark, we just follow his lead, which is exactly why you draft a guy like that number two overall. He is going to light it up. Everyone else does their job around him. He'll take care of his. You know, Mike T, there's been so much talk on this show and others about the expectations on Caleb Williams, about what, what is he going to be? What's he going to do in Chicago? It's been much quieter around Washington. Do you think Jaden Daniels is set up to have the bigger season? Absolutely. When you look at the job that Adam Peters and Dan Quinn have done, they've gone out and gotten guys like Zach Ertz and Austin Eckler to add to players like Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson, who's been a little bit under the radar. That is a really good group of skilled players who are veterans that can help bring a rookie along. And I don't want to get, you know, overreact to what we just saw the other day, but the throw that Jaden Daniels made on <laughs> tight man-to-man -man coverage is an elite throw. So he has all the ability in the world and I think a very underrated supporting cast. And I wouldn't be surprised, while they both may have good years, if we're sitting here saying that J Jaden Daniels is the rookie of the year. Mm -hmm. So the game that Lewis just referenced, I covered that preseason game. And I talked to Jaden uh, after he's done his post-game press conference, and I talked to Dan Quinn privately. And Jaden obviously said, you know, uh, it feels good if the coaches trust me in that situation, all of our quarterbacks. But I asked Dan Quinn, you know, why would you have confidence in a rookie? And he said, 
yeah, he's a rookie, but he's got the confidence and the calm and the presence of an older player who's seen a lot. And Dan Quinn, you know, that, that play, Jaden looked over at the sideline smiling because that was an audible. He has the permission to do that. But Dan Quinn was one that said, you know, that was one of those plays he was going to ask for forgiveness later, not permission. But I like that. I like it about him. He called it, it's like Maverick in Top Gun. Like, do I have permission to buzz the tower? No. And instead, he did it anyway. Mm. And that is why he's in their building. <laughs> So we love what we saw from him yep. yesterday. This room was a buzz with what we saw from Caleb as well. What did yep. you see from him in his preseason? From game? Caleb? Yes. I mean, Caleb. it's 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 doing the extraordinary ordinary. Like you you expect there to be fireworks every time he takes mm -hmm. a snap because of the way in which he's always trying to maximize and squeeze the most out of every play. Now. I think he understands, and I'm sure Shane Waldron, the offensive coordinator, is telling him, look, we don't need the extraordinary every play, but you know the possibility exists there. And even when there's chaos around him, you saw him there where he just dumped off that, that ball, you know, there to the running back. I mean, he's under to DeAndre Swift where he's under pressure and he kind of throws it across his body like this and turns his head. Like, a lot of quarterbacks can't, don't have the poise to do that kind of thing. Then you saw the throw he ripped rolling out to his right and threw it back left. That ball looked like it was shot out of a jugs machine. I mean, he flicked his wrist, and that ball was on a rope, screaming. Guys just can't do that. Mm -hmm. They just can't. And he has fantastic weaponry around him, fantastic production up front, a running back who right now in Swift who wants to show that he is still an elite caliber runner, a defense that is on the rise. Look, to me, I have said this all along. This, this year, it's this throw. I mean, just watch this. I mean, that ball is screaming, and I saw him throw in person, so I know what it looks like and what it sounds like coming off of his hand. This is more about Shane Waldron this year, the offensive coordinator. I'm telling you, the scrutiny is going to be on him. If this does not pan out right, you want to talk about Nick Sirianni in Philadelphia with yeah. all the weapons they have? Shane Waldron, I'm telling you, is going to be the guy that is in the crosshairs this year because he's got so many things to work with, and this guy is a unique, unique talent. He's the offensive coordinator, the new one there in Chicago, for those yep. who don't know. Uh, Matt Eberflus remains as head coach, but they made the change at offensive coordinator. How about it? What, what did you see through a GM's eyes, Mike, from Caleb Williams in his debut? Yeah, very similar. I mean, it's hard not to get excited because you could see the things that are hard to do outside the pocket, throwing across your body, downfield, outside the numbers, and accurate. Now, look, if you want to pump the brakes a little bit, Greeny, you would say, you know, neither team that played, you know, Washington, Chicago game plan, and obviously they'll see more complicated coverages. But for week one, boy, in preseason, it was really, really encouraging. Now, the big thing, we saw Justin Fields, uh, excuse me, uh, Caleb Williams slide. We didn't see Jaden Daniels slide. And I would be every day talking about protect yourself, protect yourself, protect yourself. That was something when we had Mark Sanchez as a rookie greenie, he did not do naturally. And despite the success we had, that was always a big concern was about when to protect yourself. And that's something that rookie quarterbacks have to learn pretty quickly. They brought in Joe Girardi yes, for I that. Have a they brought in Joe Girardi for that. I remember. We, we didn't, I, I know what Mike's talking about as far as Jaden in particular because of some yeah. of the hits he took down there at LSU. But yeah. you saw the zone read down on the goal line that he ran in for the touchdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's so freaking natural at that.